go. We're securing the pod to the spring deck. First, the scrim was pulled over the top of the Algerian and the original pod. And it was tacked with number three tacks along the frame. The uh, excess burlap was tucked underneath before the tacking and it was pulled down relatively tight with the anticipation that the stitching, when the stitching went in, it would tighten it down fully. To give you some idea of the density of this front edge, after it's, after it's been stitched, I'll show you that it's, you can take a tack hammer to it. It's still malleable, but it's firm so that when it's sat down upon, it will not collapse. This particular type of pot and edge roll will last a century or more. Behind it is the spring, which still continues to flex. And as you can remember, the spring actually terminated, the orbits terminated here. So this entire front edge has been filled with fiber, allowing the, the, the interior of the pod to continue to spring up and down. There are bridle stitches running along this line. You can see chalk marks around the top, which are indicative of where the bridle stitches will actually be stitched in. There are looping back stitches that lock. If this were new construction, it would simply loop loosely and allow for the tucking under of stuffing. But in this case, we have a, an already defined pod that's filled with, with um, uh, uh, straw, flax straw. And so it's relatively dense and uniform. And so what we're trying to do is basically just secure it back in. Once the bridle stitches are placed in, this piece will look thusly. It will be truly a recessed pod, and it will accept the additional stuffing, which will be curled hair or, or curled horse hair, and it will be stitched onto the surface, and it will fill the, the voids and uh, be ready for a muslin uh, over, over upholstery prior to the, um, the final covering. Okay, I'm going to show you a couple stitches. This stitch is the, um, I call it a finger stitch. I learned this from one of my mentors that was uh, taught in Ohio, one of the few upholstery shops left that did only um, vintage construction back in the early 20th century. In Europe, they call it other, other uh, stitches, uh, uh, top stitching, back stitching, feather stitching, um, let me just start this course. I ended up with this knot. I'm going to just run my needle back through. This front edge is already defined, so I can pretty much feel, pretty well feel where my stitch needs to go. This is a linen twine that's been doubled over, relatively light linen. So it's been ganged together as a double thread, and it's waxed. Okay, I'm going to come back through. Am I in my right place? Yes. And I'm just going to do a slip knot for my first stitch. And I'm going to take the last course, even though it's knotted off, and just unify it, unite it with the next stitch. Come on. There we go. Sometimes you have to work it back and forth because the tension is created by the waxed twine. Okay, now this is going to be a locking stitch. I'll show you how that's done. I'm going to go 
counterclockwise. Is that counterclockwise? That's clockwise. That's clockwise and, and counterclockwise. We have two courses. They're going to create the knot. And this is a handy little way to cinch everything up to where it doesn't end up rolling back on itself and creating a knot prematurely. You can pull the loop up. And back on itself and it's tight. Now I can go ahead and take these tags left and snip them off. They're tight. And you can come back with a regulating needle if there are any anomalies and not fear that you're going to rip the burlap or pull the twine out. Now this course of string will run all the way along the length of the front edge and the back edge and it will define that front edge as a even point right along the frame. Ultimately, this will have a bottom band that is stitched in underneath the, the edge roll. It will create a decorative element that will roll out over this void filled with horsehair and tack to the frame below. Now I'm going to show you the um, so it looks like you lead with this stitch, though. You lead with what you're about to do when you're doing it. Yes, actually, this is the first stitch. This form of top stitch is, is the first stitching. Basically, what it's doing is it's grabbing this front section of, of fiber, which is adjacent to the springs. The springs are right behind this line. And it's creating a line down through. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. So, strings coming up. So it is a uh, blind stitch, a locking blind stitch. And uh, I'll show you how that's performed. Again, I'm starting with a new course of, of twine. I'm start right next to my old stitch. You can feel this. Now this, if this were new construction, you'd have to define it by regulating the materials forward in advance of stitching it and um, again there's a great deal of feel that that goes by rather than a visual you need to have enough density inside this um, stitching otherwise it will collapse Just like the um, finger stitch that I performed, I'm going to create a slip knot to start out with. I'm going to take my last course of string, tie it in. I can get rid of that so it's not in our way. Careful not to cut your burlap. And just cinch it in. It looks more difficult than it is. It just takes some practice. Now, I have overstepped my, my tension and I can relieve that tension by coming back with a regulator. There are various gauges of regulators. It's a little more stout. Come in and pull your threads back. You can slip under the thread pull it back a little bit, it will slip through that knot just a little bit where you can gain a little bit of length on your twine. Okay, now we're going to actually do the blind stitch that will lock. Going back next to the last stitch, up through, and grab hold of your string so that it doesn't wind up on itself. top and under two courses of string to create the knot. Pull back through. Now you can take the top loop and pull your excess out to where it doesn't want to curl back on itself and create a knot. That's always troubling. And then just pull back on the string and it tightens down. Come back with your regulator, pull it 
up a little bit. Hmm. And it stays in place. And you have a front edge. And you can see that this, this blind stitch initially pulls it down fairly deep, the stuffing deeply. And you, you could create a very recessed pod if you wanted a, a super tight seat, but we don't for this purpose. We want it to actually be a little softer toward the center, so we're not going to let it fall down into a, into a cavity too deeply. Once this is completed, we'll have a nice precise edge, hollow in the middle, and then we'll show you the fill as far as um, the horsehair, the muslin undercover, and then the cotton topper prior to the upholstery uh, cover. Great.